thank you for uh, thank you for your attention. Let's uh, let's focus for 25 minutes and then go have a great day and learn and get a little uh, as I know here a little wisdom. Um, take one minute, grab a pen, and I want you to write down for me on number one what you believe your foundation is. And then I want you to write down for me what you believe the definition of wisdom is. So we'll take one minute to start that. What's your foundation and what's your definition of wisdom? Fill in the blanks as we go. Let's go down to number two. Somebody give me your definition of wisdom. There isn't, isn't really a wrong answer, so just throw one out. Anyone? Anyway. Yes, sir. I like experience in something. Good. Experience. Anybody else? How many experience? Also. To make the right decisions in different situations. Right decision. Very good. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Did you just look it up on Google? That's really good. It's close. Where's your phone? Let me make sure. All right. So here we go. Ready? First word. Second word. And good. comes with age, that's experience, right? Knowledge, where do you get knowledge from? Everyday life, right? School, as you get older, you get knowledge from this. So you get knowledge from experience, and you hopefully get this from both of those. You get judgment, you're able to judge the right thing. If I said to you, all right, so why don't you and I go steal a car? Would you say that? No. Probably not a good idea. I always say to my guys at the end of each season, golf season, I always we have a meeting. Austin has been in three of them now. Lorenzo has been in one. I always say, if over the summer you ever have some thought of doing something and you're not quite sure if it's right, call me. And I'll tell you. Like if you called me at 11 o'clock on a Friday night and said, Hey, coach, it's Austin. Lorenzo and I are thinking about stealing a car. I'd say that's probably not a good idea. You should have that kind of judgment already, right? It comes from being smart. It comes from having wisdom. It comes from knowledge that you work hard, not a good idea, or anything else that's impractical. This, we're going to get to the wisdom part in a minute, how this ties in. This is what you should seek wisdom your whole life. 
You should be seeking this your whole life. I'm 56. I'm trying every day to get more of it. I don't have enough of it yet. I'm trying every day. Learn more, get more. How do I get more wisdom? Foundation. Give me a couple of your foundations. What's your foundation? Today, right now, what's your foundation? Anyone? Awesome. Family? Family is one for sure. What else? You're amongst them, right? Right now. Friends. You saw them this morning. Probably, right? Your parents. Yes, sir. Teachers. Teachers. Right. So at your in your life right now, at your age, those are the principal parts of your foundation, right? So this weekend, this past weekend, Coach Hubbard and I went to um, Kiwa, to Charleston, South Carolina, to play in the National FCA Scramble. 50-some teams, they, all over the country come in, you spend two days at this great resort, and it, it'd be hard for me to explain it, I could show it to you, but it'd take too much time. But there are, all along the golf course, there are these magnificent homes, like you've never seen before. And they line the golf course with this view. I would say that the ocean is probably from here to the soccer goals away. But they're up and they line the golf course and they are just spectacular. And the caddies are talking about $20 million and $30 million. And some guy just sold one for $20 million And they are enormous. And it really got me to thinking when I was standing there watching or playing and we were, had some idle time, it got me to thinking about those houses. And the, the man, who's an engineer here? Anybody looking to want to be an engineer in their life? Anybody thinking about being an engineer? There's an engineer back there. It got me to thinking about the people that built that house. Someone built them. They didn't just sprout up out of nowhere, right? Somebody built those houses. And it got me to thinking about they built them in this area of the country where they are under enormous stress, these homes. They just had that hurricane that came 60 miles away from going right through Charleston, but it missed them. But they just had a, a massive, or a Dorian, a massive hurricane threat in the summer. And all, it really, really dawned on me as I'm standing there that day thinking about the foundation of these homes, how magnificently they've been built to withstand stress and to withstand damage and peril and things that, that happen in, in that area of the country where hurricanes come through once a year, there's always a hurricane threat. They were built specifically to withstand that stuff, specifically. If you look at any of the buildings in New York City, if you've ever been to New York and you've looked up at a huge building, what happens? Anybody know? If you look up at one of the really tall buildings, what happens? Our engineer can tell, what's that? It moves. Correct, it moves. Why does it move? It has to shift, to be able to shift from the, the foundation is built so that it has to, so that it can shift from the wind, the wind and the pressure of the top. So all of these buildings are built, these, these huge buildings, they look like you could just shove them over, right? I remember going, when I was in the soccer business, we went to see the St. Lee Arch in St. Louis. And when you stand there, it's, I mean, it is like almost wobbly. Right? And they've all, they're all built by really smart people who understand the physics of it, the dynamics of movement and the ground moving all the time. And they are able to withstand enormous stress. And it's all because of the way they're built. It's all because really smart people with what? Wisdom. Built them. So when I was there the other day, we went back to our house. Uh, we had a little house, 10 minutes, 50 minutes from the golf course. We pulled in and it was built up on, what would we call that, Coach? It was just built up, right? It was, it was this high, right? It was this high, the house was this high off the ground. And it really got me, for the first time really ever in my life, I really started to think about, I'm a golf guy, I'm not an engineer, I'm not smart enough, but really got me to think about the foundation of these homes and how they were built specifically to withstand stress and to withstand damage. And we sat around each morning 
myself and Coach Hubbard and the other two guys who were with us, and we had some fellowship time, and we talked about um, our relationship with God, and we talked about just our life, and we had a great three days together. We laughed a lot, um, played great golf courses, and we had a we had a blast. Um, but I, from that weekend, I really took from that the importance of this foundation. And I had never really thought of it before until I saw these homes and we joked around, you know, like, what does this guy, what does this person do who owns this home? I'm like, what do they do? And we happened to see these two women out on the morning, was it Sunday morning? I guess it was Sunday morning. We saw these two women out on the deck of their home. We weren't close enough to see their faces, but we could see they were women. They had robes on and coffee cups. And they were standing on the top of this home, which I guess I would probably do if I don't mind those. I'd go out and have coffee too. But they were up there enjoying this phenomenal view. And it dawned on me as I was watching them, we were standing on the tee waiting, and it dawned on me, and I thought, I wonder if they've ever given any thought to how they got up there. And they had this humongous view of this beautiful, probably the best view of, of, at the place, right? Of the ocean and the golf course, and they're up there in the rows with the coffee. And it really got me to thinking, I wonder if they know who built it, all the work that went into it, how many different people it took to build that place. And it just stirred a lot of things as I was thinking about what I was going to talk to you guys about this week. And I come in here and I sit in the back and I listen, you guys are a remarkable young man. I have to tell you, I, I, I'm, I give you so much praise for coming in here and doing this and trying to, um, trying to, as you get ready, and I'm going to weave into you getting out of school here in a minute, but as you get ready to go on to your adult life, um, if there's anything that you need in your life that we have as adults, it's wisdom. And the only reason we have it and you don't yet is because we're older. It's the only reason. You're all smart enough to get it, you're all smart enough to use it, but what you don't have yet is our age and our mistakes and all the dumb things that we've done, and if we stood here and started telling you all the dumb things we've done, we'd be here till noon, probably later. But you're looking for wisdom. Matthew 9, 19, 26. We all have these favorite verses. Brian's is a verse about running the race. Right, Coach? That's your favorite one. We all have our favorite verses. We can all sum up the Bible in one or two or three verses of our own. Everybody's got a favorite. With man, this is impossible. This is Jesus talking. But with God, all things are possible. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So the person that built that house, or the people that built that house, with man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. They had a foundation to build. Their foundation and the foundation of the home are connected to one another. Their foundation as a, as a, as a human being made possible by God. With man it's impossible, with God everything is possible. Proverbs 2, 6, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. And that wisdom is where? Where do you find that sort of wisdom? You find it in the Bible. So when you read the Bible and you read all the books, some of them are, you know, some of them deal specifically with the life of Jesus, some of them deal specifically with the life after Jesus and the wisdom that those people gained, his disciples and people that followed him. But when you read it, you get from that wisdom. So there's this saying, used it with my golf team a lot. There's a saying, a lot of debate about who said it. Once in Churchill, um, Henry Ford, but there's a saying that says, we can achieve anything as long as we don't care who gets the credit. Everybody in here is an athlete of some, of some sort, right? We can achieve anything as long as we don't care who gets the credit. So it is by far the best sports cliche, and there are a lot of them, right? It's by far the best sports cliche that's ever been associated from you know, Winston Churchill, if he's the one that really authored it. But it wasn't made for sports, it was just made. But it applies to sports 
better than anything. You guys want to beat St. Joe this week, right, Coach? Yes, sir. Doesn't matter who scores the game when it touchdown. Doesn't matter how it happens. Could be a fumble you pick up. Could be a safety. Could be. Doesn't matter, right? As long as you win. We can achieve anything as long as we don't care who gets the credit. So you hear all the times athletes after a game say what? What do you hear them say? You hear a lot of athletes say immediately after the game when the microphone's in front of their face. I want to give praise to God. I want to give praise to Jesus. I want to give praise to my Lord and Savior. You hear all you hear that that saying a lot. And every time I hear it, my I my I guess respect or fondness for that athlete goes up. I don't even care who it is. It could be Heinz Ward, who was like one of the most <laughs> disliked guys in the history of the Ravens-Steelers rivalry. But when I hear him say that, I immediately say, maybe he's not such a bad guy after all. Because if they take that moment to give the credit to someone else, and in this case, they give the credit to God or they give the credit to Jesus, but it, if they take that moment to give him credit, there's, that, that really tells me something about them as a, as a person, that they don't care who gets the credit. We all know God didn't run the ball in at the end of the game, or God didn't hit the home run, or God didn't score the game winning goal. Everybody knows that. But the trickle down from that is he's built the foundation for them to be athletes. Lamar Jackson's there. There by the grace of God go I. Lamar Jackson's there because of God. Marlon Humphrey will stand over in the office gym in a few weeks, hopefully, and tell you the same thing. He's there because the foundation that God gave him is what's made him into a football player. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So, all these, the, you know, and, and I, I keep going back to this this episode, if I want to call it that, or the weekend that I had when I was at, at, at Charleston, it really, really made an impact on me of these homes that were built and the foundation of these homes. So my two golfer, or maybe even three, because Hayden may be with us, but my, um, my team is learning or seeing for the first time right now. We have a theme every year for our golf team. And you, all you athletes probably have one with your respective teams. I know Coach Kelly does it with the lacrosse team. Coach Davis might have one as well. It's always a theme. And the reason we do that is just to have something to go back to. Just to go have something. Last year, our theme was stay in it. And there was a, a, there was a huge circle of, of components to stay in it and what it meant to us. There's a golfing component. There's an actual golf swing component to stay in it. You hear a lot of times somebody will hit a shot and you'll say, you got to stay in it. And there's a, there's a golfing analogy to that. And there's an analogy about staying in it that applies to the first minute of the football game to the last minute of the football game. Stay in it. The Ravens drafted a guy once named Gary Baxter. He was a safety. He played at, played at, he played at Baylor? Baylor University. He, Gary Baxter played at Baylor, right. Um, there was a game, there was a, a game that Ozzie Newsom was scouting Another player, a wide receiver from Oklahoma or Oklahoma State. Probably was Oklahoma State, right? Because they wouldn't have played Oklahoma. Would Baylor have played they, Oklahoma? they could play both of them. Okay. If it, it was, was one of the two. Uh, Ozzie was looking at a wide receiver on tape before the draft in a game against Baylor at a wide receiver. The score was, sorry to say this, Coach, the score was 30-something to not much. Baylor was getting clobbered. And Ozzie, with a minute left in the game, Ozzie saw this play by Gary Baxter and said, rewind that real quick. And they went back and they looked at it again, and he said, I want somebody in the, in, the, in the film room to get me more video on this kid, Baxter. So they brought back a bunch of tapes of Gary Baxter. And Ozzie watched them all and realized that that kid played as hard at the beginning of the game as he played with 30 seconds left in the game. And that one play he made in that game against Oklahoma or Oklahoma State at the, at the end of the game, that one play might have got that kid drafted. I think he was drafted in the second round. Might have got him drafted. One play that caught Ozzie's eye and said, man, that kid's playing awfully hard for losing 37 to three. And the theme was stay in it. That kid stayed in it the whole time. 
our final match of the year last year against Loyola in the championship, I was walking, the, the coaches sort of walk with different groups. Um, I was walking with Lorenzo and Patrick Hurdle, who's graduated, and we got to the last hole and it was over. We had lost, but there was no way we could make up the difference in, in the score. And I remember walking on the tee of these two guys and I said, finish this hole like the whole match is on the line, right? Stay in it, let's just go play. Keep your head down, hit four shots, make a birdie. What'd you make on the last hole? Birdie? Yeah. Hard. You lipped out. Yeah, lipped out for Jordan. Right. Knocked it up there 15 feet, lipped it out. Patrick, same thing. Great. They both finished up. Patrick made it, in fact. So they just stayed at it. So for the first time, my guys are learning that we, this year, our theme is going to be that we are built for this. That we have this foundation and wisdom just like those houses had in Charleston. They were built for this. The wisdom of the people that built the houses and this foundation they built. Those houses are built. Built. They're built. I said to the guy, in fact, we were standing there, I said, did any of it, did the hurricane damage any of the, the houses? He's like, no, not at all. And it, and it really dawned on me that they are built, they were built to withstand this, just like the skyscrapers are built to withstand massive winds. If you think back to 9-11 and the tragedy of that day, and you think about what happened, and you go back and look at history, those planes hit that building, and it took an hour, an hour, for the whole thing to eventually come down. And if you think about the destruction of that airplane and going into that building, it took an hour for those buildings to come down. And they were built, and, and any building now, of course, is built similarly. They were built. They weren't. No one really knew they'd be flying planes in the buildings, but they were built to withstand that sort of impact and tragedy. So you guys are built for this. That's why I asked you to write down what your foundation is, and I ask you to write down what your definition of wisdom is. If you have those two things, foundation and wisdom, you are built for winning, losing, good days, bad days, mom and dad happy with you, mom and dad not happy with you, mistakes, you're built to handle that. If you have wisdom and a good foundation, and I would say to you that now in my 56th year, probably even now, I guess I'm in my 57th year. I would say to you as someone with wisdom and with experience, read the Bible and pay attention to the words that are in there. And you will someday look back on what you've done here and coming in here at 7.30 or 7.45 on a Thursday morning, you'll look back on this and you will understand it was part of your foundation. And it's not to offend anyone who isn't in here, but you're going to look back on this in five or 10 years. You guys are all getting ready to go off to college. It's gonna be a lot different. In fact, your foundation will change when you go to college. The foundation shifts a little bit because your parents are gonna be there every day to whisk you around and get you up and yell at you for not brushing your teeth. You're gonna be on your own. Your foundation will change a little bit. But you'll look back on these days when you made an effort to come in here and do this and learn more about God and his son and wisdom and knowledge that's in the Bible. You're going to look back on this and you're going to be, you're going to be built for the next stage in your life. So, stay true to yourself. You can achieve anything you don't care who gets, as long as you don't care who gets the crowd. Just remember that, okay? All right, boys, thank you for letting me share. Yeah, coach. Hey guys, good morning. I'm, I'm